and uh, let us know how it's all happening. All right, thank you, Lisa. So um, this is our actually our second time uh, presenting this presentation. So back in Tahoe at the Programmatic Summit, we actually presented this case study. Um, unfortunately, we were the very last presenter on day three, and we literally had 10 people at max seeing this presentation. So Steve had reached out and was like, can you present this again in a couple months? So we said, sure. Um, so I guess we're on round number two on this. So I'm going to pass it to Sarah to explain more what is Mall of America for those that don't know. Um, do I have to turn it on? I did? Oh, hi guys. Um, so I'm Sarah and I am with Mall of America. And so who, round of hands, I guess, of who's familiar with the brand and who's been to Mall of America? Oh, okay. I was going to say I'm going to have to do some education. Welcome, you guys. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, I'm going to do some just fast facts about what Mall of America is and how vast our property truly is. So fun facts, we have over 40 million annual visitors a year. We have over 520 tenants. Our property spans over 5 million square feet. We have over 27 attractions on the property as well. So in the middle of our property is a theme park called Nickelodeon Universe, which is always a blast. For those of you who have not been, again, find me after. We'll talk about it. Um, and we have over 400 plus free events, two a year, and then two on-site full service hotels as well. So very, very large. And just to jump in here quick, if you've seen the movie Mighty Ducks 2 when they're like rollerblading, mm -hmm. that is Mall of America. Yes. Um, so to put it into a tourism perspective of just how many visitors we have come annually, um, we have travel packages from 80 different countries or 80 different travel packages from 36 countries and five different continents. So approximately out of 40 million annual visitors, approximately 40% of those are tourists. So for fun, we are going to show you our new brand spot, which just launched and went into market this last month. So we, as I was mentioning, we are just a really big property showcasing a lot of different opportunities and we're really that experiential destination for not only locals but tourists alike. So we really wanted to showcase that in our brand spot obviously and then we also will have, which we haven't launched holiday yet, but it will be in the next couple of weeks. I wish I had something to show you for that later on, but it's essentially this, but we rotate in clips also from a holiday standpoint. So it's going to be a different theme, but still holiday focused and still showcasing everything that we offer. So when it comes to our biggest challenges, essentially we are just the hub. We are not an e-commerce, so we don't sell anything on our website. We do sell, we own Nickelodeon Universe, so we do have a revenue driver that way. But otherwise, our biggest challenge is honestly, how do we get people to our property and then increase frequency of stay once they're on, and then also encourage repeat visitors. So when we were vetting last year for our 2018 holiday campaign, we looked at an abundance of different agencies. And so when we, and well, I guess when we met with Cicerone, it was one of those things that not only were they able to deliver from beginning to end, but they were also able to hack the system, if you will, with us on, an, an, on attaining what we needed. So diving into our target audience and who we target on a regular basis. So we primarily target, which I feel like a lot of people say that they do the same, our females, especially moms, 25 to 54. And so that is our primary audience, and that looks at also from 50 to 150 mile radius. And then beyond that, our secondary audience is similar to our primary, but that expands out from 150 miles to 500 and 500 plus. All right, so a little bit about the cross-channel architecture for this. Um, what I like most about this campaign was this is the first time we were to give awareness channels, t connected TV, Spotify, an attribution with foot traffic. So we use the trade desk as our main, main DSP, and we able, were able to work with factual as well. So we were able to track from awareness of ads to foot traffic in the mall. And we'll have in a few slides more of the attribution and what was more cost effective when that came as well. In addition, for the first time, we were able to work with um, data providers and get a lot of that data into social, um, Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as execute that same audience across programmatic channels. So you want to go to the next slide? 
So we did some segmentation. This is just a very high level, simple overview of the segmentation that we did. If you're from the Midwest, you know what Wisconsin Dells is. If you don't, it's the water park capital of the world, fun fact. Um, and there's large resorts there that have water slides for the family. So we really want to go after for the spring break campaign, that family that is going to go to their attractions at the mall. So what we did is we actually placed geofences around these large resorts in uh, Wisconsin Dells, um, Wilderness, um, Great Wolf Lodge, um, and the Kalahari. And we were able to execute against that audience, again, across all channels, in connected TV, Spotify, as well as Facebook and Instagram using mobile advertising IDs. In addition to, we did some segmentation to target the audience um, based on location, lookalikes, and audiences. Okay, so let's dive into our holiday campaign from 2018. So just an overview of what our objectives and our measures of success looked like. So objectives, we're looking to increase traffic by 1% year over year, and then sales by 2% year over year. And then we're looking to also increase frequency of stay, length of stay when they're on, um, brand awareness, and then um, just general engagement as well. So nothing too surprising there. And then here are some creative examples. So during the holiday season, just to put it into perspective of how big it is, so we have four Santas on site. Um, that's just one aspect of it, but we have activations all season long for about two months. And uh, so these are the different creative examples of what we really like to push during the holiday season. So Santa's one of them. We also do a gift guide, which is a really big push for us as well. Um, we did uh, Black Friday, obviously, to be surprised, is one of our biggest driving traffic days of the year. And then we do two free wristbands. You spend $250 at the mall, you get free wristbands to Nickelodeon Universe, encouraging that traffic, and then also obviously spending on site. And then we also do a free New Year's Eve celebration inside Nickelodeon Universe which drives thousands of people that are local and then also within our drive market. Uh, so as this was our first year working with Mall of America, we were, just to start off with, we were just looking at simple website growth. We were not even looking at the attribution um, at this stake. Um, but basically we had 20% year over year growth on the website and then some social fan growth as well. Um, most importantly, um, as a digital marketer, we're always looking at results, always looking on return on ad spend in IRL, real life. What is this driving us at this moment? So as we were doing this partnership with Factual and the integration to the trade desk, it was so fascinating to me as a digital marketer where we typically see, um, we put Spotify more as the, you know, the top of the funnel approach rather into the funnel approach. So what we actually found was Spotify actually had the lowest cost per visit than any other channel out there. Um, so at 22 cents, we are able to drive a cost per visit with Spotify. To put that into perspective, where a display is you know, three times less expensive than Spotify, um, we actually saw display ads had a higher cost visit percentage. So that was at 36 cents. So as we're progressing into these new campaigns, and a lot of that we are taking this principle to a lot of our other clients as well is, I feel like audio is such an underrated channel um, and how we can use this to better inform campaigns for Mall of America as well as our other clients as well. Um, in addition to, there's so many great metrics that we were able to get from this integration with Factual into the trade desk. Um, we were able to see where the audience is coming. So this is you know, correlating to our efforts for our radius targeting for Mall of America. So uh, for the holiday campaign, and you'll see uh, the spring break campaign will differ a little bit well, is about 80% came within the Minneapolis-St. Paul DMA. You can kind of see that in the heat map, as well as a little bit in Wisconsin and then Chicago, which is probably you know, your hour flight that they're coming in for the holiday campaign. And I do want to note too, based on this information, we took this data and are applying it also into our 2019 campaign as well. So not only do we obviously know that a lot of people are coming from our drive market and locally, but it gives us opportunity to optimize outside of our market as well. And then to give more focus to like the Des Moines area, um, Milwaukee, Chicago, and really set ad spend aside for that specifically based on these findings. 
And also while, just to quickly touch on this, um, we also wanted to hit the audience wall at the mall um, just to give them any kind of other additional promotions, things that we wanted to do. So we did a small budget towards display towards this audience at the mall. And what we were finding, it was probably a lot of men while the women were changing or something like that. It was a lot of fantasy apps, sports apps, and news apps mm -hmm. that we were finding. So an interesting little nugget that we found throughout this campaign. Okay, so diving into spring break. So based on what we found from holiday that we implemented those findings into our 2019 overarching strategy. So our next up campaign after holiday is spring break. So we start that about February and that runs through about mid-April um, in the cities. So our strategy was very similar to what we were doing for holiday. It's how do we get people on property and spending money and then increasing obviously frequency of stay once they're there. So as this is a TV summit, uh, what we, we did for the spring break campaign, heavy in the connected TV space. Um, what we had found out when we were comparing numbers is actually who had the highest visit rate percentage. Um, so you may say, well, what's visit rate percentage? It's similar to like a click-through rate. You take visits divided into, in, into impressions. So what we can say is while we didn't have the lowest um, cost per visit, if someone were exposed to a connected TV ad, especially Hulu, they were more likely to come to Mall of America was the key fun, finding on, on that. And that was all based on the foot traffic with Factual. Mm -hmm. And then as I kind of teased five minutes ago, um, the efforts on where we were seeing this foot traffic came from um, is actually while we were more dense in Minneapolis, we actually saw more drive traffic during um, during the spring break campaign. So that would correlate people wanting to get into their car and travel to the mall and stay for a little bit. So that was the big key finding from comparing the two campaigns. And as we progress, so the holiday campaign, we were just first exploring the relationship of this kind of offline attribution. As we progress into the spring break campaign, uh, Factual was able to release some updates to um, their capabilities. So over the next few slides are more granular data that we were able to collect comparing to the holiday campaign. So what we were able to do was make a correlation between ad exposure to weather pattern. So the main takeaway here, and I'll let Sarah jump in here in a second, was that people go to the mall when it's cold out, not when it's freezing, when you don't want to leave. We had that polar vortex this year. <laughs> And certainly people do not want to go to the mall in the spring when it's 50 degrees out in Minneapolis because you're outside in a t-shirt at that point mm -hmm. in your life. <laughs> yeah, so based on these findings, obviously we weren't too shocked by this, but it really gave us that leverage from other partners as well and other platforms to continue to advertise during the sweet spot versus and pull our ads during other aspects of it. So we're not wasting ad spend on when people are not actually coming to the mall. Um, in addition to what we are looking at, so I live six miles directly south of Mall of America. I drive by it every day, and on a Saturday, I'm like, there is sure no way I'm going to go to the mall. I see that parking ramp. Hell no, I'm not going to the mall on a Saturday. However, what is really interesting from this data is actually Thursday is, was the most busy day. Again, that could be a correlation to a spring break time, so they were wanting to go during the week, but I really thought as a consumer that was really interesting to see. Actually, I think Sunday was the lowest day, but yeah, Thursday, Friday were kind, were kind of the bigger days for the mall. Mm -hmm. And I promise it's not that scary. It really isn't. Locals are a little terrified by it, but it's a fun time, I promise. Um, so based on this information too, again, we're not surprised we see that traffic pattern on our daily reports, but it is something that we can continue to showcase and optimize for activations on site Monday through Wednesday and how can we continue to get traffic to the mall during those slower periods. And lastly, this was just talking about, so we, I know the panel a little bit earlier was talking about how um, would love to do PMP. So we did um, PMPs for this deal. Um, again, just this is really just attaching on kind of the mix of the connected TV um, apps that we're using. Uh, for the next campaign, we are going to focus a lot on Hulu just based on the visit rate result that we touched on a few minutes earlier. Okay, so holiday this year, again, I'm sorry, I don't have anything from a video standpoint to show you because we have not launched yet. Didn't want to test those waters and break boundaries a little bit. But I wanted to show you what that is going to look like for us this year. This is what that creative ideation looks like. Again, our goals are very similar to last year in the sense that it's how do we get people to the mall and also how do we go further than just our drive market. We really want that surrounding, you know, Levin tri-state area to come in and to experience us during the holidays. 
and then here's the look and feel. So very playful, fun, vibrant. All right, so looking ahead for our holiday go-to-market strategy this year is we're going to start a little bit earlier and have a balance between the five-state region uh, as well as a 100-mile radius and kind of coordinate the two based on campaign spends and timing. In addition to, as mentioned, with all this offline attribution, we can't quite do it yet in the social channels, is based on these re previous results, we're actually shifting a lot of our effort into the programmatic so that we can have that attribution and those statistics. So where last year I think we were more heavy up in the social space, we are now um, bringing in more programmatic channels and we are going to be doing some more PMPs with local publishers as well. Um, and looking forward to, we're in 2020 planning with the mall right now, just looking at, you know, the, the tentpole events, looking at what is always going to be our foundation, mm -hmm. uh, programmatic social channels, and then doing some experiments throughout the year, as well as having some new activations with influencers and stuff like that. Yep. We want to move into that always on strategy. We've been doing it a little bit, but we've been very campaign focused in the past, and that's something that we're really looking at changing, so this is something that we're really excited about moving forward with Cicerone. And lastly, as I mentioned, from the holiday of last year to the spring break, there was more data points we were able to pull on. Moving forward, Factual just released more data points that we can uh, report on, which makes my little data heart so happy. Um, we are now able to see dwell time at the mall, which is going to be a key thing for Sarah. Like, how long are people staying here? And what is going to be really interesting, too, is to give attribution, like, okay, if someone saw a connected TV ad, are they spending longer at the mall? Is someone that listened to a Spotify ad going to be staying at the mall longer? So it's going to compare the channels as well, just give an overall insight. As well as distance travel. So as you saw with the heat map, that was a more DMA focus. So now we'll be able to narrow in is, is it 50 miles, 100 miles, and see where these people are coming from. And lastly, the demographics. Who are these people that are coming? income, you know, age and sex. So I think that will be really interesting to see from ad exposure to the mall, those additional metrics. So if you invite us again next year, we can report on we'll those Some year-over-year year results. Yeah. It's a little plug. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. So do we have any questions? I actually was curious, because you talked about real time and that you're trying to get those kind of measurements as well. Are you able to connect with them in any way or use any type of social media while they're actually in the mall to sort of push them to, you know, do more, maybe, you know, directing them into some places or to spend more money? Absolutely. And we did that with the display ads during holiday last year. Um, and we've done some social things with geofencing as well. But yeah, we did have some offers in the display. Um, to tell them for, I can't quite remember the offers that we had, if that was the wristbands yeah. and stuff like that. But yes, that's definitely a thought of ours that we've done. Well, I would think also where, what social would be, I would think, a great way of reaching people um, mm -hmm. for your location, but um, where it's so hard to measure, are you trying to be more specific in terms of getting those? Are you concerned with that? Or again, which we talked about a little bit earlier, is overall what your, you know, what your spend is going to, is that enough for you at this point? Um, I feel, that's a challenging question, I feel like. Um, I'm trying to think of the best answer for that. I, I stumped them. I did a little bit. Um, so I feel like, backing up a little bit, brand awareness isn't necessarily our problem. So a lot of people, especially locally and with our drive market, understand who we are. So it's really once they're in the area, it's getting them on site. So social is definitely one of those areas that we want to allocate our budget to but it's also figuring out what other channels make the most sense as well. So we don't want to spread ourselves too thin, but we do want to cover um, from a display standpoint, from a social standpoint, from a connect TV standpoint, we really want to hit all facets um, and obviously target them how they're interacting, especially on our property. And I think too is, you know, as an agent, we've done a lot of paid efforts. So how can you leverage that organic side while they're at the mall, mm -hmm. I think is another key thing. Yeah, I think that would be, I mean, it just seems like a perfect fit, especially as you said, they're in the mode to do it. So if you can somehow grab them while they're there, it's a perfect op Absolutely. opportunity. Yep. Do we have any questions from anyone else? Sean Robertson with DISH. Uh, thanks for the presentation and the amount of data that you shared. What's the correlation between dwell time, time spent, and spend, right? So my 20-year-old spends a lot of time meandering. I spend a yeah. lot of time spending. 
but I spend a lot less time than him in the mall. Yep. So how do, you, how do you gauge that? So that's very challenging. That was something that I went to our data science team prior to coming. I was like, can you give me any specific data on our spend and a correlation in that format? And they, we actually don't have that data specifically. Unfortunately, it's just so vast and it's just, we can't get that granular at this point, but challenging them. I hope we can eventually. Hi, Joe Grisafi, Ampersand. Uh, question for you guys. Uh, American Dream is opening up right down the road. Um, and then there's going to be an American Dream, I think, in Miami. Mm -hmm. You guys have first learnings. You guys all, it's the same ownership. I'm just yeah. curious, uh, has there been conversations on how you guys are going to kind of the test and learns that you're doing now yeah. and how that could be part of future strategy? Because I know there are people probably from all over the country here. Yeah, absolutely. So our new location actually opens next week. We're doing a soft opening, which is wonderful, and that's in the Meadowlands over in New Jersey. So it's going to be another major mall, very similar to ours. Um, we're going to still have Nickelodeon Universe over there. We're going to have a ski hill. There's going to be a water park. There's going to be all of it. So I highly recommend you going out there and visiting. Um, so from, I guess, a strategy perspective, I, that's something that we're working very closely with their team as well to make sure that we're correlating, but it's also something our property specifically is evaluating what our strategy looks like to offer set that essentially. So we will take, we'll support them obviously in that format, but we're also kind of going to divide and conquer based on just understanding, you know, at that point people coming in, they're probably from Europe are probably going to stop there first and they're not going to maybe make all the way over to us. So how can we offset that and what does our strategy need to look like? So that's focusing and this is something we're still blowing out. We're still working through. This is what we think and this is what we're projecting just based on our data and findings. But it's going to be a telltale sign when it finally opens. So that's going to be a little bit different. And then Miami is a whole other ball game. So we still have a couple years before that's coming. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely something that our teams are working together with. It's a great question. It's just we don't know until it finally opens. But based on data, we hope that um, we're just going to divide and conquer essentially. I've got a question um, uh, with Live Ramp. I'm Guy Three. This is a fascinating Sorry. case study because you're a regional brand. Um, how did you deal with sort of the one of the challenges a lot of regional companies face is minimums with audience sizes for these types of buys? Could you talk a little bit about that, um, or was it just large enough that you didn't have that challenge? And the second part of the question is, when you were looking at Hulu, how did that? differ from your other television strategy? Was this the first time in TV? Was this more just the first time in OTT? Like, how did you divide up that spend? How did you, how did you decide to make that shift? Yeah, so for this campaign, uh, I mean, Mall of America, from her example, is global. But for these holiday and spring break, it was really kind of the, the regional, to your point. Um, you know, as we were, at this time, we were part more of the digital aspect of this, not any kind of linear TV buy. So I don't have any insight into the linear TV buy. Um, but we didn't um, have any issues. We did a lot of private marketplace deals. So there was no minimums or anything that we had to deal with that. Um, but yeah, just really looking at the overall strategy, we didn't hit any kind of frequencies issues or anything like that just because of um, how we were targeting and doing those private marketplace deals. And from a linear standpoint, so we obviously, our media mix is pretty vast and where we target and what we do. So from a linear standpoint, we're about 80-20 at this point, 80% linear, 20% experimenting in like Connect TV, OTT, and otherwise. I hope that answered your question. Hi, David Clutter from Beachfront. Uh, just curious with the location data that you're using from Factual, were you able to glean any other important um, insights based on cross-visitation and things that you can apply to the campaign uh, in terms of audience targeting and understanding where the audience goes outside of Mall of America? Um, there is, um, you know, something that we've been playing around with is doing a whole actually factual study of just not based on ad exposure because that's all the data that you're seeing right now, but doing a full factual study of where these people are coming where are they coming from, and more granular data. So I think that could potentially be on the roadmap. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all we could see from our results was on ad exposure, not the overall picture of the mall at no. that time. And that's something that as moving into 2020, we really want to create that holistic, robust view and how can we get diver, dive deeper, mm -hmm. essentially. So it's on the list. Yeah. We would like to do that as well. Yeah. Well, I think that's good. So great. Thank you guys so much. This is really informative. <laughs>